injuries? I mean, how's the squad shaping up? Do you have any, any update on any of the players that are out? Uh, yeah, so Johan got through 60 minutes on his recovery uh, in a reserve game. Um, fortunately, we've got a, an under-23 game on Saturday, so we'll get more minutes than that. Hopefully 90 if that goes well. Um, Barnes come come through it uh, well in the last game. That's good. Woody's been carrying a bit of a knock on his Achilles, um, so we'll see how that is. Um, he wasn't on the grass today, so we'll see. Uh, Westy wasn't on the, on the grass today equally um, <clears throat> with a tight groin, so we'll see. Um, uh, Charlie, Charlie Taylor. Taylor's had a good week. Yeah, Charlie Taylor's tra uh, trained all week. Kevin Long's trained all week. Um, they're the main ones, I think, off our um, list. JBG. Oh, you've said Not him. saying, yeah. Yeah, oh, he's getting some Gibson. Gibson. Is he the one? Uh, Gibbo's, no, he's, he's unfortunate. He... He had an niggly groin last Friday. We had to pull him out of the game in the warm-up and we've got to make sure that's settled. So although I don't think it's a serious one or anything like that, I doubt he'll be fit for the weekend uh, for selection. So, yeah, so we, we're kind of getting back there. Um, you know, it's important with these sort of lot of games coming up um, that we do get as many people fit as we can. Um, but we are getting back there now and hopefully everyone will, will stay fit now. Yeah, I mean... This period, I mean, you've done it now many times. You've got four matches in the next 12 days. From your experience, how much do you plan your rotation of your squad? How much do you just have to go game by game on who's fit? Yeah, often it's game by game. Um, you know, I'm not overly one for planning beyond the next most important game. Um, within reason, of course. You know, unless there is a situation with suspensions or injuries or knocks and whatever. Um, I suppose the other way of looking at it, though, it's only... <laughs> It, it does get exaggerated slightly, not not for the, you know, obviously Liverpool have got a situation at the minute, not for them, but for us, because it's the, it's really the, the two games in the three days. That's the real tough one. Um, you know, just from a medical point of view, scientific point of uh, point of view, sorry, with recovery, et cetera, et cetera. That's the real tough one. The rest of it, if you have, you know, two games in a, in a week sometimes, I don't think it does the players, uh, three games in a week, sorry, I don't think it does them any harm. You know, if it's Saturday, Wednesday, Saturday. Uh, but them two games, they just kind of confuse the issue a little bit because there is very little recovery. Is this an opportunity, though, for some of the players who might get a chance to start or get some minutes they haven't done for a while to get a stake of place for well it can be but uh, to be honest we've had to change it anyway recently because of the the injuries we've had um, with the three game week so I think uh, the, you know although we didn't get results in them games the good side of it I think you get minutes into people you know they're getting full uh, or mostly you know situation where they can get good minutes in their legs and and into the mentality although be it a tougher on the results until last week when we had a nice win it, it still gets you out there it still gets you playing and, and adds to that sharpness just another question on Ben Gibson. I mean, I think I looked at he's started six Excuse matches me. since he joined. I know he's had these injury problems. How frustrating has that been for you not to be able to get him time on the pitch and vice versa for him not being able to play? Yeah, I think it's I think it's both. I think it's very frustrating for him. He was very unfortunate when he first got here with injuries almost straight away and um, one that didn't quite, you know, sort itself out and had to be, well, not redone, but he had a um, hernia and the other side had to be done. So that delayed everything. Um, he's came back... Pre-season, I must say, super fit. Um, and the two centre-halves who are currently playing, I must say, have been, have been very strong um, through pre-season and into the season. So that makes it difficult for, for Gibbo and for Kevin Long. And then, you know, ups and downs with knocks and injuries is, is not helpful to anyone. Um, you know, frustrated, I'm sure, to not get football, uh, as much football, sorry, as what he wants. Um, that sometimes is the nature of it. Are you considering maybe letting him go out on loan in January? Or? We're not at this stage um, thinking of anyone going out um, because we, we carry a small squad. Um, there are people that want football, of course. And, and don't get me wrong, if, if something, if a situation arises where it's right for us, then of course we, we try and be fair with the players when we can. Uh, but equally, the bigger picture is to keep performing the Premier League you know, and, and keep that going on an on, ongoing basis. So it's, it's not easy. You do need everyone. And, and recently it's just shown that, you know, six key injuries is a, is a lot for us to carry. Um, and that did stretch us right the way to the sort of bare minimum. Um, and as we've discussed earlier on, you know, that is coming back now. We are getting people fit. Um, but it is tricky to find people that, what they want, but equally what we need. And I think that's a tricky balance. And do those players come to you to ask when they'll get their chance? I mean, how does that yeah. dynamic work? Are you happy yeah. to have those conversations? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, very open with the players here. Um, they've been open with me as well, you know, when they get frustrated and they're not playing, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, you know, that's the way it goes. They're, they're also, as well as being open, they're also professional and they understand, you know, the challenges of being in the Premier League. And any update on your own plans? Do you think there will be a chance of anyone coming in? Um, it's 
it's tough. I don't know any budgets. I don't know what the scenario is yet. So that's always tough. Um, you know, you don't know what, what's truly available. You might think they're available. You put names on a piece of paper and you, you wonder, but when you get into the, the nuts and bolts of it and the phone calls start getting made, sometimes that gets thrown out immediately. So it is tough. Um, been through it before, not just for us. I think, I think January is a particularly tough uh, month anyway. Last year, I think Peter Crouch came in, didn't he? Um, I don't think he's got a club at the moment. Maybe bring him back out well, Simon. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I'm listening to his second book and, uh, and on the audio book and I think it's fantastic. I tell you, funny enough, I messaged him just yesterday to tell him exactly that. I think it's a nice balance, bit of banter, bit of stories, you know, uh, stories of the past, but also a good reflection on his, his playing career and the balance that he found, different tactical situations, um, really enjoyed his, his view on set pieces and the importance of. Um, no, he's, he's, he's got a nice balanced view about it, I think. Like I say, a nice mixture of a bit of banter and a bit of fun, but also a serious side underneath there, thinking about football. So, yeah, he's doing all right, I would suggest. I don't, <laughs> don't think he needs to come back here. I think he'll be all right. Is he a good example, though, of how when you can bring someone in, and that was a signing from left field for most of us, oh, it can just give the group a little bit of a lift because, um, coincidence or not, your form did pick up in the second half of the season. Yeah, and he tells me it's all down to him. Um, <laughs> I've only, only played about seven minutes, but... <laughs> No, he's a great character. He really is a good character. Um, we were happy to have him around. I would have definitely looked at keeping him here. Um, he knew that. But equally at his age, with his experience, he had a decision to make. And I think probably he's made the right one, not because of his football ability. But I think, you know, while he was hot in the media and doing a good job, I think a lot of doors have opened for him. And it seems like he's in a good place and, and he's enjoying himself. And he gets a Christmas off for the first time in goodness, uh, goodness knows how long and um, with his lovely wife and kids. Um, and coming up against Eddie Howe at the weekend, two longest serving managers. I know we've spoken about yep. that before. But what similarities do you think the pair of you have? Um, I don't think we're that similar as people. I think we have a lot of respect for the job. I think we have a lot of respect for each other and, and all the managers out there. Um, I think the similarities of clubs, you know, seem a bit different. They've, they've put a, a reasonable amount of money into what they do there. Um, we, we probably lesser so, but the size of the club's slightly different with their ground. But I mean, you know, I think they're similar in that sense, similar clubs in the sense there's a, an earthiness, but there's also a belief in what they do. Um, but no, I, I, I mean, I just think any manager doing what he's done um, has earned the, the right to be respected. And he's certainly respected by me, that's for sure. Last time we joked about the 18 days that he carries over you um, in terms of his longevity. Do you remember what you did with those 18 days? What I did? Yeah. Do you Probably I was on the golf course, I think. Yeah. Um, wait and see if I got the Burnley job. <laughs> and you did? Yeah, and I did, yeah. A couple of interviews and here I am. <laughs> Seven odd years later, walk in the park. There you go. Many more to come? Many more. Years to come? Who knows? I mean, it's a, it's a tricky business, this, to, to make big statements about the future. But... Uh, I'm OK at the minute. Sean, what do you make of the shape that Bournemouth are in at the moment? Because they had that fantastic result against Chelsea, but before that, they'd struggled for a while. Well, I think, I think that it's difficult for all teams um, anyway. And I think runs of form can come and go quickly. You know, it's a, it's a strange division for that. It seems to be... Um, it plays tricks on you. You know, it, you, you, you put one game down and it might go, you know, it might be a bad performance or whatever. And you go, OK, you move on and... And before you know it, you can be three, four deep and you haven't had a win. And you think, where did that come from? You know, I thought we were performing quite well. And, you know, and then you've suddenly got no wins or no points, um, which they had a spell of that. And then out the blue where no one expects you to, you pull out a result against Chelsea, which probably no one expects you to. Um, not them, of course, but, but outside of that. Um, and then they probably feel a, a little bit better about life, but equally knowing that the next one's not an easy one, um, being us. So... It's always a balance, you know, to what you're doing now, how you're looking at it, how you're viewing each game, and then also the the understanding of a bigger picture of a season. And it is likely that teams like ourselves, I can't speak for them, but it's likely statistically you do have some bumps in the road. It's just the way it goes, you know. It's improbable that you have a full season without anything going wrong. Um, highly improbable for anyone, but particularly for the team sort of mid midish table group if you like or currently then uh, you know there's bound to be a few bumps in the road and that's the way it goes yeah when you do have a bad run as well it's about getting back on track isn't it and you did exactly that of course against Newcastle well, that's one of the biggest things you know how quickly you can deal with any disappointments that come your way um, I think experience helps I think you know my group are, are more experienced with that now 
Um, I don't mean against Bournemouth, I just mean in general. You know, we've got a better experience leveled group um, against the kind of the hits that you have to take in the Premier League. And also the balance that comes when you do win games. You know, it doesn't guarantee the next one. So you've got to be realistic and go, right, a good performance or a strong performance as we did against Newcastle. We can play better, but there was a strength to it. There was an edge to it. Um, that doesn't guarantee the next one. So they're equally wise enough to know that you've got to keep working all the time and keep consistency high to get, get points or wins and you know, more points on the table. You mentioned the word strength there, describing the performance. It was the first time that Burnley had not conceded a shot on target in the Premier League for some over 200 matches. What did that say to you about the, the sort of situation your team's in at the moment? Well, it says to me that that's how strong the Premier League is. If that's the first time we haven't had a shot on target against us, because that's how, how tough it can be. Um, you know, everyone kind of finds a way of having a chance. Um, I think the, the the facts of the Premier League, it's it's an unforgiving division, and I think every manager talks about it, and, and there's a reason for that. And it's not that other divisions are not hard, of course they are, but you just you can get punished badly in the Premier League. And you know, recently we had two two events against top sides where everything they did punished us. You know, and that can be the way it goes. Um, and if you haven't got an answer defensively or an attack, you can get them bad results. On the other hand, against Newcastle, I thought we, we delivered a strong performance and, and you know probably edged it enough to get the three points. And, and that's important as well. Them close games over a season, it's really important to get on the right, uh, the right side of them. And I think historically, we've done that well and we've got to keep doing that well. And the ones when you play really well, previous to that, we'd had two back-to-back three nils, you know, which is not that usual for us. But them ones look after themselves usually. Either you're playing really well or the opposition might have an off date or whatever it is, but them ones look after themselves. It's the tight ones. They're the ones that are really important for teams like us. Um, and certainly, I can certainly speak about us. They're important over a season to get them right. And just quickly, on Bournemouth again, they, they could be missing both Josh King and Callum Wilson, the, the recognised sort of first choice centre forwards. Does that change anything for you in terms of your preparation? No, I think if they've had a, a spate of injuries like we had recently, um, they've got a result. I think, I, I, well, from what we gather, I think it's unlikely they're both injured. Um, if they are, they are. That's the way it goes. It, it still doesn't make games easy. You know, it doesn't make an easy task to win games in the Premier League. Um, on the other hand, it gives them slightly less of an edge just by the stats and the facts. That, you know, they've, they've delivered for them on a, a, a number of seasons now. Um, so not easier in the game style, but possibly gives them less of a threat. The reason I say possibly, they've had other pr- uh, productive players from the wide areas. Um, they nicked a goal last week from a midfield player, you know, coming from a set piece. Um, so like I say, no, no, no task in the Premier League is easy. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Hi, Sean. Hiya. We've seen in the last couple of days the new sort of um, chief executive coming mm-hmm. in. How does that change anything from your point of view? How important is it? To well, only found out I'd be on your news last night, so that was interesting. Um, but it's a it's a different way of looking at it. You know, the a different uh, avenues opened up for someone else to step in. Um, I've been very fortunate here. I feel on a personal level, I thought Lee Hughes was terrific. Uh, I enjoyed working with him. I've enjoyed working with Dave. He's going on to a different challenge now. And Neil actually, um, Lee, who's had a lot to do with Neil Hart being here, but I had a, a, a voice to in that matter because I, I knew him from Watford. Um, he's a bright fellow. He's done brilliantly here for the community side of things and now, you know, transferring over to the, the team side of things and uh, the chief exec side of things. So, you know, we wish him well with the, with the challenge that's coming. And it must help to have a... And Matt Williams, of course, going into a different role. And the chairman going into a different role, executive chairman. So, yeah, slightly yeah, different. I'm not sure what that means. Did, I'm not sure Neither am I, but I know it's a title <laughs> and uh, it must mean something to someone. Someone may be writing, let me know. Um, but obviously important to have the, the familiarity with... Uh, with Neil both in terms of he knows the club and obviously he knows he knows you from for a number of years yeah I think you know we haven't worked closely together in that respect but I do know him and I've known him for a long time and Matt Williams has been there a number of years so yeah not radical shift I don't think um, but realigning well Neil will have his own mind on what he wants to do with the office side of things and all that sort of stuff um, and he'll know probably not to speak to me about the football side of things and we'll have a lovely relationship it'll worst night work about just about perfect does it change anything in terms of looking ahead to, to January or is that just a, can, continues as, as well un, unless he's got a load of money for me that would be brilliant um, probably I don't think he will have um, no I mean it's, it's a working relationship like I said I've known him a long time and I don't think he'll have any pro- he'll learn as he goes I'm pretty sure of that because um, it is different um, but like I said he's a bright fellow and I think he, he will adapt and he will learn and, and move into the role and um, become part of what we do here and just, just on January I think you've spoken in the past that it's a, well you mentioned in fact earlier that it's a tough window and it's difficult to, to get sort of all the all the things aligned that you would like is that a, 
a daily conversation anyway in terms of yeah, it's, I've said many times, it's ongoing here. You know, we, we don't rely on a window where there's going to be, you know, pockets full of cash to just go and do what we want. Um, it's ongoing, seeing what... The, it's not just it's not just looking at places seeing what's available, it's keeping your ear to the ground as well because situations are right. I can't tell you which ones, but we, we've got players out of situations because we've just been in the loop at the right time and, you know, know the, the different information that's being swapped about what might happen and being ready for if that might becomes a reality. Um, sometimes that's the way it goes. It's not just purely just looking at players um, and certainly not just purely finance. Very difficult. So, uh, you know, all them things have to combine to get the right outcome. I guess it's a mixture of, of sort of stats and you seeing it with your eye of, as to who you might might fancy as a player that likes and might rig having a list and saying, here's 10 good players and the contacts that you've got in the game and others to... Yeah, it's all of that. It's all of that. And, you know, you've got to believe in the system as well. So sometimes in the modern game, it's very difficult to get to see every player that you want to sign. Um, I do try to. Some, some it's slightly different because we've seen that much of them down the years, obviously the, the, the British English players. Um, but, you know, ideally you do see them, you know, live with your own eyes, but sometimes that's difficult. So sometimes the system, the idea of the system is to put you in a position where you can trust in what the anal analysis has done and the scouts have done in order to make a sign. Yeah, and I guess you're going to have confidence in that that system here anyway. But yeah, absolutely. And, and we're, we're, we're trying to grow it all the time. And just lastly for me, on Danny Drinkwater, is there any sort of update as to where you think that might proceed? I know his loan. No, not at the moment. I've just had a chat with him today, actually. He's looking fitter, he's looking sharper. Um, we'll wait and see. As things stand, he's, so he heads back to Chelsea, I think. So that's it? two questions, is it? I thought it was the last question. Yeah, but I wasn't satisfied with your answer, so I'll have to ask him. Oh, no, okay, it's a fair one, yeah, and I'm going to give the same answer. <laughs> as it stands, though, he's heading back to Chelsea on. No, it doesn't stand anything like that. It stands that as it stands, he's playing for us, and we're going to wait and see what happens and see if he can get himself a shirt and then play really well for us. Thank you. Thank you. Out of that, what are the keys? You know that mic didn't actually make a voice any louder. <laughs> it's incredible. That must be a non-working mic. That works. Yeah. Oh, does it? All it right. does for the cameras. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> what's the keys to making sure that two or three defeats don't turn into sort of five or six? Well, it's 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 not easy to 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 find the keys. Um, you inevitably rely on the players performing better if they haven't been performing so well, which was our case. Um, and then really the trust in the players to, to find what they need to win a game. Um, you know, you can give them the format, you can make sure they're right physically, you can make sure they're right somewhat mentally as well and, and li aligned with what you think is important to perform and to win a game. Um, but in, the end product is trusting them, you know, and I do trust the group here. When they go on that football pitch, you want their knowledge to play a part as well. And I think that's important. And I think the, the game against Newcastle was a good sign of that. I thought we'd come away from our performances the previous two. Um, not necessarily three, but the previous two. Uh, against very good sides, it must be said. But I'm not about the results in their performances. I'm not about playing with that edge and that demand and that kind of uh, strength to go and play to win. And I thought we'd come off that. Whereas against Newcastle, I thought it was really evident. Uh, and the team found a way to do what they need to do to win that game. It's, so it's not, you can't define the exact thing, um, but what your experience tells you and your knowledge tells you, you, you can help to find a way and put the group in a position to find that result when you need it. So did you have to remind them of that? Or are you saying the trust sort of means that they, they no, know no, that? No, 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 we, we speak about it. We speak openly about these things, you know, and about where it is and, and what the demands are. And um, But I'm on about when the game time comes, the work you do during the week, you should, by that stage, have put the work in. They should know the plan. They should then be in a, a point of trust to go and deliver. Um, you know, that's the way I think it should. Well, that's the way I work. And they should, at the end of the week, be already there. They should know. So, you know, I've said many times, the actual game time moment, really, the build-up to that is, is, should be quite calm. It certainly is for me because the work's done. They, they, you know, we, we hope they've got the knowledge to go and deliver and then it's about trust, trusting them to go and deliver. Thank you. Okay.